Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, The Bird and Plant Show. This, this week again, we have Jackson, AKA Ayana. Part two, I told you I really needed to do a part two. I made pizza, she wanted veggie pizza. Mushrooms? Oh, what you said the green was parsley. Parsley and oregano. Oregano. And tomatoes, onions. It looks really good. Yeah, yeah with uh, creamy, um, was it, Havarti cheese Ooh. and mozzarella pearls. It's a little messy because I don't have the, um, <laughs> it's a little messy because I don't have that pizza cutter that I need to get because I see why they have it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm going to, you know, cut it because it's, mm. we on camera. If I, if this was no camera, I'm picking this baby up again. Right, right. Trying to, trying to be clean. Uh-huh. Trying to be clean with it. Oregano has become my favorite. Like green? It might be second to, um. Which one call it? Cilantro? Yeah. I love cilantro. I love cilantro. Mm -hmm. But bro. Oh guys. Mm -hmm. This is good. You seasoned it real good. But wait, I didn't season anything. At all? Nothing. Wow. I was gonna say that next until you this said something. Flavor. I did not put not salt, not pepper. This is bad flavor. This is just flavors of what God put on this earth. I did not that. put any seasoning on it. I have to do that. And I was just like, dang, I shouldn't have put something. I was like, no, let's no. let's see. Mm -mm. I know, okay, let me let's get into it before we start going here. Yeah. I'm gonna eat while you talk. <laughs> so unfair. All right, so last week you talked about a lot, but there I feel like there was so much more that we, we want to talk about. But y'all would have been watching us for five hours, and that's ridiculous. I don't, I don't even have my attention span is not even that long to even deal with that. <laughs> okay, so I'm not even gonna do that to y'all. Even though we can chop, we can chop very long. We can. We can chop very long. <laughs> 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 so this week i want to talk about because you didn't really get to go deep into it what were some of the there was a question you asked me though when we turned the camera off i just wanted to remind do you remember you. that mm -hmm. okay what was the question you asked me how my mom responded oh yeah yes start off with that. how did your mother respond she was um i had asked so i had called my mom literally while i was still here after after when you asked me mm -hmm. and my mom was just like she trusted the fact that she planted the seed and she was just like, she's in my home, so I'm praying over my home. Mm -hmm. You know, like she just was pretty confident mm -hmm. that things were gonna move. And she was just like, same because I had, you know, shared with her that you, you know, you're your mom, you have a, um, a little boy. And she was just like, oh no, you, as parents, you you give your kids back to God because mm -hmm. you'll worry yourself sick yeah. if you take that approach. Mm -hmm. of, I gotta protect my child from mm -hmm. every little thing. And so she was just like, nope. You were his child before you were mine. And so that was the mentality that she kind of took on. She was like, she gonna be all right. She gonna, wow. she gonna find her way back. And I told and you what faith. mom. Yeah, straight faith. And I, my mom literally, faith, if, if there's any faith that I've ever seen as strong as hers, mm -hmm. like because of us, you know, us growing up, being her being a single mom, I had to take public transportation at a very early age. Mm -hmm. Like I was like nine. Mm. traveling by myself sometimes and um she just had faith she was like god is going to take care of my kids because she was going to school to get a higher degree so yeah. that she can make more money to take care of us and that was her main focus getting her my mother has her associates her bachelor's and her master's that's beautiful and so she was doing her thing but all of it while being a mom and that's a lot. before being married you know, it was just her. That's she did lot. all of that by herself. Because that is, <clears throat> I've done my masters being a mom, but it was with help of a husband. Husband, yeah. To do by yourself, and that was a lot. Mm -hmm. And two kids, not one. Ooh. <laughs> and I get support from my parents. Yeah. We get support from my parents. So imagine. Mm -hmm. Oh, not you. I don't imagine. I take that back. Don't imagine. <laughs> That's crazy. And actually, that reminds me. Before we had Zion, God prophesied, right? It was through um, prophecy over my womb, but he was like, mm -hmm. give them kids back to me yeah. when I give it to you. Mm -hmm. And before we, before anything, right in the hospital, as soon as, that was, that's what my mother did with me. Mm. As soon as she said, as soon as I came out, she lifted me up and did, gave me back to, to God. And that's mm -hmm. same thing with Zion. <clears throat> and sometimes, like, people... Funny thing, I just posted this today. People don't realize the power that God has given you. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, a lot of times we think that we need to go to a church to do something. Yeah, like the and christening do, and all yeah, that. No, all no, 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 no. He, you, you could do it right then and there. I had just reposted somebody. I was talking about anointing your home all the time, mm-hmm. right? And sometimes some people believe that you have to go to the church and a pass out to pray over oil. oil and the what. No, you take that olive oil canola. God don't care what brand it is. Yeah. You pray over that mm-hmm. and you anoint your home. You could do it yourself. You get what I'm saying? So this the same power that he has given that pastor you have so much faith in is the same power he has given you. Because what he said? Yeah. With a, that, what scripture is that? With the faith. When it said the power that uh, lifted Jesus. Uh, resurrected Jesus is a power that's within all of us. You have it to anoint your home. You have it to mm-hmm. cast out demons. You have it to intercede on the behalf of others. Mm-hmm. You have it to pray over and anoint your children. You have it. You definitely have it. That's we were talking about inheritance last week. That's your yeah. inheritance as right. a believer. Like that is the seal. He told you, I, I left you something as a mm-hmm. promise. You get what I'm saying? So any parent out there, it is easy to say when you're not in this situation, but just hearing your mother's testimony just have faith and trust god that he's going to take care of your kid yeah better than you better than you Mm -hmm. because we're still human we still got our downfalls and our shortcomings but he is going to take care of your kid because like you were saying it's not always like fire and brimstone sometimes it's just god taking their hands off god taking his hands off and just letting and as a parent i know that's hard to watch yeah but she watched because she knew like she was like let's listen i can't it, you know, it made me think, but I was telling a friend that was going through it, and I was telling him, like, sometimes we love the person so much that you want to help them. We don't want their fault to be so hard, but sometimes we need to stop play, playing pillows on the people mm-hmm. and let them fall. Because now you are postponing God, that birthday. or you're pushing God, you, the time, you're messing up the time mm-hmm. for God to do the um, to do the breakthrough, and you're making the healing yeah. Tom, you postponing it. There's a difference with helping somebody actually need help in terms of like God tells you go help this person. And mm-hmm. there's a different difference when somebody is just willingly mm-hmm. disobeying God and doing their own thing. And yeah. God keep trying to, because sometimes He will let us hit a brick wall. Yeah. God, God keep trying to let them get to the end of themselves. And here you go. No, <laughs> stop. Make let them. Nick. Let them niggas fall. <laughs> you have to. Let them fall. Cause with, I mean, when Peter was like, oh, I'm not going to let them take you, Jesus was like, Satan, get behind me. Mm-hmm. He called it Satan. Cause that's mm-hmm. a big deal. That's a big deal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they ain't laying them on He called it Satan. He oh. did. Because it's very, that's big. That's big. If I'm trying to work in the life of somebody else, don't obey the devil and completely inter- interrupt but plan. that's how tricky Satan is. Yeah. Yo, Satan is so tricky. And you think you're, you're doing you're the good. good. <laughs> yeah. That you little think. sucker will make you it's feel like, like no. because in, in, it's not in the place. regular situations, mm. helping somebody is good. Yeah. So he will make you think you're doing good, but he's like, not. No. He's not. Yo, Satan case. is a little bastard, bro. <laughs> like. She for got rent. beef. <laughs> like, yo, see me outside, bro. See me outside. <laughs> me, me, the Holy Spirit. We, we, we all coming through, okay? <laughs> No, yeah. Wow. Yeah, he said, I didn't think Satan, get behind me. That was his response. He did to say Peter. that, but yeah. And he was harsh with it. Because Peter, you would think Peter, Peter is a ride or die. And Cutting people moment. ears off. Yeah. You said, what about just shank, shank? All right? <laughs> Cutting people <laughs> ears off. Peter was right. not playing. And Jesus was like, no. I I'm feel not, like I would have been Peter. I ain't going to hold you. Me too. I Sometimes I see myself in Peter. I'm not I'm going to hold you. Sometimes Peter, I'm like, <sighs> was he wrong? Well, God said he, he was wasn't. He was. He was passionate. He was passionate. Pa- the passion was mis, dis- it was misplaced. Yeah, you know the passion God, was misplaced. You know, God told me once before. Yeah. Also, being passionate, I was talking. <laughs> whenever people like would talk bad about Jesus, mm. I would get so mad, mm. and I'll go off on the like, we, Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm going back and forth with this girl mm. about Jesus, and she's disrespecting Christians. Da, da, da. And I'm, I said, da, da, da. and I hear God all the way straight up tell me. Exact words. Stop defending me. Mm. I'm like, but God, do you hear what she just said about you? <laughs> da, 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 da. He, she, God said, I'm God. I don't need yeah. your defense. I was like, oh. And I think what you said, um, like in regards to people that try to like combat the mm-hmm. belief or the faith, when you shared your husband's testimony, like those words were super pivotal. <clears throat> Facts. When he was like, because he, he had his moment of disbelief, right? And, he, and God straight up told him when he came back, God told him. 
the Bible do not, what's the word? The Bible do not validate me. Validate me. Thank you. The Bible do not validate me. I validate the Bible. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was just like, oh. Yeah. That's a shift. Like when you said that to me, the light bulb went over my head too. That's why I brought it up. Because <clears throat> I was just like, it's so easy for you to be like, for, for people to make the Bible of subject to prove or disprove, right? right. It's like, oh, this, well, take, how did that happen? And mm -hmm. take that, that. If God decided to light every Bible up on, on fire, he could. Right, and because, he's still going to be God. Because the he's scripture, still going to be true. The scripture says that the rocks will cry out. Oh. So everything in the world okay. is going to attest to his divine nature and order. So whether we have it <clears throat> physically or not, sharing my testimony with you like I, f I didn't find god in the bible i knew god was real because of how he showed up in my life <clears throat> i read scripture to get closer to god and i read scripture to learn better ways of handling life mm -hmm. but it, it had nothing to do with my faith yeah. my faith was miraculous things that were happening since i was a little girl like mm -hmm. just miraculous miracle after miracle like situations like those kinds of things, I just knew there was a God. I yeah. knew there was a God. I just knew it. Like nobody, he, nobody could talk me out of the existence. That's so funny because we just had this. Me and my husband just had this conversation about. You know, he was arguing with people on the internet. I ain't gonna talk. <laughs> but he was talking about it, talking to somebody about this, and people people were just saying like, and he basically just tell tell them like, you can't. You can say what you want to say. But you can't come at somebody's testimony. Yeah. If somebody lived and experienced it, you can't say, oh, that's not true. Mm -hmm. What do you, that's like white people come to black people, oh, slavery never happened. Yeah. What the hell are you talking about, sir? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, that life that you live with him, that relationship that you have with him, those miraculous days and moments that you you see in your life, no one can take that from Nobody you. Nobody can take that You can sit there and give me all the research. and but I see it as our own chapter. You know, like the Bible is so many people's testimony. I just see it as my own chapter. Mm. Like, cause God is gonna show up for you. He's not gonna show up for me the way he showed up for David. No. He's not gonna show up for B the way he's shown up for me. He's right. not, you know, everybody's testimony is different. Right. And it, you can see it as that. You see that the Bible is just testimony of like ancient, you know, situations that happened yeah. in the past that people bore witness to. But God is still the same God then that he is now. Right. And if he was to write it down, there you go. That's your, your That's personal chapter right. of what happened. And I think one thing that people, I don't know how they make these mistakes, but I guess, you know, we're human and we're not that smart as we think we are. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> yeah. um, some people, because it's in the Bible, they feel like, oh, God approved it. So Solomon having many wives. Mm -hmm. I think he had like a thousand. Solomon. That's a terrible idea. Like, come on, Solomon. In today's day and age. First of all, you don't even have energy for all a thousand, if you know what I mean. No, not, so, a, not if you're loving your wife like Jesus loves the church. Okay. You can't have a thousand. Okay, so <laughs> Solomon had a bunch. David was a thotty. Um, <laughs> um, freaking uh, uh, Samson got swindled by homegirl. So it was like... Just because it's in there, it's a lesson for us. Doesn't right. necessarily mean that God oh, approves okay of these things. You get what I'm yeah. saying? Because I hear people will make that argument. Well, God approved it because in the Bible, just He's telling you what these are the, what happened. One, I would say the Bible is a guide and it's also a history book. Mm -hmm. This is what happened. Yeah. It, does, did He pour His wisdom on Solomon? Still, yes. Yep. So that just goes to show you, regardless of how far you are from God, he or he can still use you. He uses the fool to, uh, what's the what's a word? He uses the foolish things to something, something the wise. I forget. I'll put it up. I'm not one of those people that could spit out scripture. Where I'm not, I can yeah. tell you what happened, the wisdom behind it. But I like the synopsis. It. Okay. All right. Just because it is in the Bible, certain things like Solomon having many wives or Freaking one of the I forget who, but the sister got raped and they went and killed everybody in the oh, city. Oh, the Le you talking about the Levites? Levites went and murked everybody in the village. Yeah, one, Delilah, he, they made them Delilah. circumcise themselves at an old age mm -hmm. and then murked the whole joint. They killed all of them. All of them. God wasn't happy with that. Yeah, he wasn't happy with her getting raped either. He said vengeance of mine, right? Yeah. But they took it upon themselves to do what they did. Just because it's there doesn't mean if somebody hurt you, go murk the whole city. That's not what he's... Because it was the whole tribe. They didn't just kill one person. They no, they took out... <laughs> <laughs> this thing. 
do, 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 do. like they went Kendrick Lamar on them. Like, <laughs> I'm not a killer, but don't push me. <laughs> Basically, you touch my fam, I take yeah, yours. Yeah, yeah. God said vengeance on mine. Very okay. eye for an eye. <laughs> yeah. Very eye for an eye. Yeah, but you know the funny thing we were just talking about when um was it Moses' story? Mm. Exodus. Exodus, and um, when God was in there with the spirit taking causing them illnesses because mm -hmm. we refused to let the people go. Yo, God on some like, yeah, the Old Testament is very much get before they get you. <laughs> he was, oh, you take my son, I like, take yours. He wasn't, and you know what's crazy? He said that he was going to do that. In yeah. Scripture, like, in the movie, you don't really see, see that. See it. But in the Bible, like, when you actually read the story, he said he was going to kill his son. Like, he he said was, you take, yo. Y'all, I sub Jesus as your savior. Yeah. Because his daddy is big, big, big. Remember when that man tripped and touched the the the, the, the throne? <laughs> the, touched the uh the, the um you talking about the uh, the, the it's gold. The, yes. The, what I forget what they call it, but they had to carry in it. In the temple. Okay? And he said, Nobody touch my joint. This man tripped, bro. Just tripped. And touched it to try to catch himself. God said, Phew. I was like, drop that. I got address. Hey, Jesus. <laughs> But why? <laughs> it was a, it was a, it, it was, was an accident. accident. What is mistake going? <laughs> but that, <laughs> that was the kind of guy we were dealing with. Yeah. He don't play. Don't he, he had to though? Because we didn't respect him. They, and the timing. <clears throat> I tell people that all the time. When you read the Bible, read for context. Mm. God is not gonna show up like that these days because we have too much understanding of Him now. Yeah. And I think we fear Him now more than they did back then. Back then, mm. they were still dealing with a lot of ancient gods, and mm -hmm. you know, I was reading Leviticus yesterday, and they were still talking about people sacrificing their children to the Canaanite that's de wild. deity. You know, mm -hmm. like, but that's there. And mm -hmm. He was just like, "Don't drink blood. Don't drink. Don't eat raw food. Don't sleep with your cousin. Don't like." He had to really break things so down do from them because dealing with people in the beginning of the world they dealt with that lust spirit and they wanted everything. they wanted everything they wanted everybody he addressed bestiality like don't uh, sleep with your animals like don't that do that. Stuff. that's nasty bro he had to address all Poor of that animals. so but that was why he was so strict he had to get people to fear him yo stop like, he was he yo was he's like, like y'all are bugging out he was out. standing on business this is a person respect my name he was like y'all are bugging out y'all following these people the canaanites the Babylonians, the the Midians, you, you know, the, even though the Midians wasn't all bad, but like, you know, following all of these other people, he had to solidify things real talk. And I feel like if we don't get it together, I mean, we have Jesus, thank God for Jesus. <laughs> thank God, yo. I'm a, um, Tony ever said this once, except Jesus while he's your, um, he's your savior before he becomes your judge. Because I don't know if you know. Like, Jesus is a judge. The baton is going we to was reading, We was reading that. Yeah. And, and was it Luke? It was, it was Luke. We was reading that he he was the judge. He is going to be the judge. like Because he's the one that proved that you can be human. Right. And follow Christ. Right. Follow so, God. not the saying that goes, only God can judge me? He yes. Does. He will. He is. But it, you can't skip Jesus and go to God. Because if you read Revelations, I know a lot of people don't like reading, but please read it. Mm -hmm. In the end times, when the time come, God is going to pass I call it a baton, but the book, whatever, to Jesus to mm. be the one to go do the judgment. So it's not God that's doing the judgment. I mean, Jesus is God too, but you know what I mean. It's Jesus that's doing the judgment. So why he's still your savior, mm. accept him. Because once he's your judge. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. I'm trying to, I'm trying to levitate with the people. I'm, I'm holding on to I want to go the ankle. first time. I don't want to go the, the second, second time. time. No, 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 no. <laughs> God forbid. For, for me the second the, time, I'm not there. I'm holding on to somebody's ankle. <laughs> Yo, I'm not. Hmm? I want to be on the first boat. Yo, no. I want to go on that one. God, when Lord. they said, listen, my, when my ancestors were singing sweet, low, sweet chariot, I want the first okay. chariot. Don't put me on the second. Second chariot, Please, what? God. Because the trials and tribulations <laughs> that happens I between want, the first and the second. I want no parts. It's mm. giving Titanic. I don't want to be there. I don't, I don't want it. I don't want it. Yo. I'm going the first time. Jesus, I'm coming. I'm, I'm holding on to your cloak. Something. I'm coming. Yeah. How many years I got to be saved to get on the first one? Let me know. Okay. I'm, I need to be on the first We just wrap it up <laughs> this, these years because we, no. I want to no. get on the first boat. But I feel like, so even talking about that, mm -hmm. while you were where you were, mm -hmm. in the darkness, I'll call it, <laughs> because, you know, 
It be darkness, but we think we're so enlightened. <laughs> I'm laughing because y'all remember the movie Twitches <laughs> from Disney Channel with the t- 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 the twin witches. Yeah, t- vaguely. T- and they was running from the darkness. Yeah, that was a funny movie. I'm gonna have to that, take They call it the the darkness. Take it back soon. We can show you. Oh yeah, go ahead. What's the um question? Tell me. Um. What are some experiences that you face in there where it's just like that kind of brought you back, like wait, or made you start thinking like something ain't right, mm. or how to like, not yeah, what are some things? Because I was just looking at, I reposted on my Instagram like this lady that was into yoga and mm. this new world religion. You saw it, new world religion where she's totally for Christ now. Mm. But today's world is all right. It's cool. You are connected. You are spiritually awake. You know what? What are some experiences? Because like my cousin even talked about it. I'm gonna pull up my. Yeah, my cousin even talked about it. She was a delta. She denounced and um, she was tormented for three months. Mm. So what are some experiences you had in it mm-hmm. that kind of had you like? Already. Wait. So. There were a couple of things. I have some notes here, y'all, because if I don't, I'll be talking a long time. It's a lot. I can talk, y'all. Mm-hmm. But, um, so if I was, let me, let me start. So when I was like, I struggled with like lust and things like that at an mm-hmm. early age because um, of me being like sexually assaulted. Mm-hmm when I was young and it happened a couple times it wasn't just that one particular family member it was also child on child molestation which a lot of people don't know about that but like I had neighbors that did inappropriate things to me because of what they were witnessing in their home um I had a neighbor that he was really really young he was no probably 11 years old he was really young but he was watching porn and he like forced me to watch it with his little brother and that's like the start of a lot of oh what chaos when I tell you utter chaos and you know I'm downstairs my mom is thinking I'm playing with my friend you know she's thinking I'm in safe territory but everybody's parents don't parent the same Mm -hmm. nobody's child is gonna be in my mother's house and we just all in a basement and she don't know what's going on Mm -hmm. but that was what was happening Mm -hmm. um there so she sent me there believing that you know I was safe and everything was good but Mm -hmm. It wasn't. And so I saw some things that I shouldn't have seen. And it exposed me to um, a lust spirit that that stuff is, you can't monitor that on your own. You can't. Mm -hmm. Um, That's something that God literally has to, every promise that he made in Ephesians, every promise that he made in Corinthians, talking about you being renewed and being made a new creature, that is a promise that he kept with me, but I struggled for a very long time like with pleasing myself watching sometimes um and being like super indulgent even when like when I started to consent to sex that was like a big deal for me and so I always know I had something right in my back (laughs) regarding that Mm. and I had a couple dreams in high school that um let me know that I was kind of in trouble and the reason why is because if you ever want to be a wife or a mom or even a good friend, mm-hmm. you don't want to exhaust the good in your mind and exhaust the good in your heart. Mm. When you get used to watching certain things, you may not be a pervert, mm-hmm. but it could potentially pervert things that are meant to be seen a certain way. Mm. And you're exposing your thoughts to a certain kind of um, world mm-hmm. that you just open up that can of worms it's like pandora's box like mm. it, it's just so much that can come out of that that's mm. why like when god addressed all of the sexual and moral relations he brought up all of it not mm. just human he brought up animals yeah. he brought up all of it because when you expose yourself to that spirit it's it's a it's, it's, a, it's satan it's, he it, don't have any limits it's a bottomless pit yeah he don't say oh this is enough it's no. a bottomless <laughs> pit it includes you know, I feel like who, who, the person that assaulted me, me being five years old, that was what he was dealing with, you know, yeah. because you know that it's not okay. But if you're exposing yourself that to that energy, you it's, you can't win that battle by yourself. And if you submit to it, befriend it, and all of that, then God, I've never 
befriended it and said, okay, you know what, let me. This is who I am. Yeah, this is this who is, I am. And that's and what Satan wants. Yeah, to identify no, with I it. never allowed myself to identify with. Well, God never allowed me to identify with. I'll say that because I, I was always praying, so God knew where my heart was and never allowed me to go that far. Mm-hmm. But um, that was something that I was battling with for a very long time, like just struggling. And I had a dream when I was in high school that um, a dark presence was on my wall. Mm. And then that same dark presence um, dragged me off of my bed in my dream. Mm. So I knew something was going on. And that was around the time that I was kind of entertaining the thought of porn. I never watched it, but Mm. at that time, Instagram wasn't as highly surveillance mm-hmm. as it is now so back then you could put anything after at, after a certain time and all kinds of content would come up. Mm-hmm. Back, back then wow yeah. i did not know that it's, it's way more surveillance now wow but back then it was like twitter mm-hmm. twitter was doing that too yeah uh, twitter still is like crazy but because it's not a lot of um if you use a certain kind of language mm-hmm. they won't they can't flag the content mm. But Instagram is way more protected now than it used to be. But that was something that um, was going on with me in high school. And then when I got to college, it got really bad um, to where I was actually watching. And so um, I had, uh, I'm trying to think, when I was, so the last episode when I talked about the stones and the Mm -hmm. dream that I had, the guy that I purchased them with that I was involved with at that time, um, we did what we did and mm-hmm. then we went to sleep and this particular night um, he was trying to do something over me and God revealed it to me in a dream as always <laughs> like doing something like put a hex on you yeah, or put some stuff on and he joked about it I thought he was joking but mm. he was dead serious because we were just you know physical it wasn't mm. a relationship and he was just like oh <clears throat> I'm gonna have to put something on you could you keep leaving me like, we'll do something, and you just, I won't hear from you. And so he was like, I got to put something on you. And I laughed it off. I'm like, ha, ha, ha. <clears throat> he, was, he was dead serious. Weirdo. He was dead serious. And I had a dream while I was in his in his bed. I had a dream that um, I woke up, and I was looking for him, and I couldn't find him. And it was this dark presence that just kept, like, running around me. And when I finally came face to face with it, it smelled like his fragrance. Mm. And so when I looked around, I couldn't find him nowhere. So I think in that dream, God was trying to tell me that he was that dark presence that was trying to put some kind of fertility spell Mm. on me or whatever, because he always talked about having kids and stuff Mm. like that. And so when I left, I researched the stones that he had in his window, Mm. and they were all fertility stones. All crystals for fertility. So each... Maths... So each... so. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know where to begin. I know. Each of these stones have a meaning. Yeah, according to these beliefs, yeah. So when you purchase certain stones, you're calling a certain energy to you. Certain spirit. Let's call it for what it is. Certain spirit. spirit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so crazy how God created these things, mm-hmm. and they're beautiful. Yeah. And Satan just took it to put, I mean, because God threw him on this earth. So I mm-hmm. guess he just have control over everything that wow. is out here. It's like, oh, if you pray with this or pray over this or whatever, because I'm like calling this to yourself. So that's how it works. I'm like, it's just a stone. How does it up? Because you same way how yeah. it's just oil until you pray over it mm-hmm. and then God blesses it. Authority. 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 So when you have these crystals, you do call these spirits, not, not energies, spirits to mm-hmm. you. But do know that there is a sacrifice. Yeah. Okay. My my womb. <laughs> yeah, there's a sacrifice. That's what he wanted. It was all all of the fertility stones. He had them in his window, and I researched all of them. He had all of them, and Oops. I can still name them. I can still name them because they were all in the window. You gotta show me after this. I don't give you ideas. Yeah, I, yeah, but they were all oh, wow there, and even the intimacy, like the time he wanted to do it, I none of it paid. I, I got. God knows, I was not paying attention, but the time, all of this, which I was like, mm. they're doing. It was on purpose. Wow. It was on purpose. Yep. Which hours? What time? When everybody is sleeping, three o'clock in the morning. Uh-huh. You want to hear something funny? Yeah. Is it three o'clock in the morning? Usually, which hours? Between one and three. Yeah. It's funny <clears> because <throat> a lot of times God will wake me up at three o'clock to pray. Mm-hmm. And the, is that just me? Yeah. Amongst believers. 
It's usually that three o'clock, two, three o'clock where he wakes you up to pray. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, Satan is is active. I, I need do, my people yeah. to be active too. Yeah. And then Every. just to even mention, like that just goes to show how much your prayers of a, as a parent or your prayer as a friend or a loved one, your prayers and what your mother taught you was still active even in your mess, even yeah. in your sin. In my, God was, was still talking me. to you. God was still protecting you. God was, He didn't have to show you dreams about nothing. No. He could have been like, well, that's how you want to live. Go ahead mm-hmm. and live it. And there's so many more. Like, um, that particular individual, I put myself in harm's way. He was a total stranger. <laughs> you wow. know what I'm saying? Like, that wasn't... Somebody you know. No. So you don't know what spirit he coming with. No, I didn't know him. I didn't know him. But that's how lust, how, that's how far lust would take yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I had no it's idea. It's like an itch you got to scratch. Yep. Don't care. You find them on dating mm-hmm. sites. Come. Come to my house. Yep. Sure. And that was it. It was literally that. Mm-hmm. Like, literally a one night stand. I yeah. feel like sometimes we all worry about physical, physical safety. We don't worry about, we don't think about spiritual safety. Yeah. And, what, and he, whatever he did, I wasn't pregnant, but he threw my cycle back a couple of, I, I was super late. Mm. <laughs> like so God blocked it. When I talked about the dream of me oh. purging, I felt like that was like a pregnancy, like him saying, like, Yeah, you I'm I'm not gonna allow you to be impregnated by this, but I want you to know that this was the goal. Mm. That was the goal for you with this person. I never spoke to him again. After I had that dream about the dark shadow that smelled like okay. his cologne, I never spoke to him again. I blocked him on everything and we never spoke again. And he tried to get back in contact with me, but I just kept blocking him. Just kept blocking him because I knew I was kind of in danger. I was like, nah, he's he's. And it's spiritual danger too. We're not talking about yeah. oh, he's gonna kill you and shoot no, you. No, just spirit. Like he was feasting over me. It yeah. was a situation where they take pictures. People in that kind of situation, they'll do anything. And sometimes all they need <clears throat> is a picture to go do their yeah. witchcraft on, mm-hmm. and it affects you. Image. <clears throat> That's all he needed. I had another dream. Most of my revelations of um, God's authority in my life came because I think I made um, sex such a big deal in my life that he would use that as an opportunity to show who was more powerful for me. Mm. But after being assaulted, I just spent so much time trying to get my power back. And that Mm. was how I was doing it. Mm. And so every man that I was involved with, he would give me information Mm. about who they was every time. There was um, another instance where our uh, ex was trying to spin the block and God was just like, no. "Mm -mm." He had a baby on the way and I found out before he told me Mm. because I had a dream that we was in a boat and it was a huge blue fish that jumped in the boat and attacked me and was trying to take my arm off. And so the next day, um, I had reached out to him because he ghosted me and I was just like, what's up? Like, usually we get in contact and we speak and he was just like, nah, something happened and I'm just all over the place. And so I just said it. I said, you got a baby on the way? And he was like, what? She's a witch. No. (laughs) He was like, what? Nah, what? And then he thought about it and he was like, nah, I can't lie to you. Yeah. And he told me. And that was my first love. Crazy thing is, I felt so emotional. I was mm. like, that was supposed to be me. And God was like, girl. Hell no. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? I didn't even think I was going to say hell no, but <laughs> heaven no. no. Heaven, <laughs> heaven's no. <laughs> heaven's no. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. That was one. And then wow. I had one of the, my last relationship. Um, there was a man, a man that was all silver mm. in the dream. And he told me, he was like, this is your last chance. Because I was not protecting myself. I wasn't being careful. And mm-hmm. so he was like, this is your last chance. Like, the next time you pull a stunt, you're going to be con- you're gonna conceive and be stuck with somebody you're not supposed to be with. That was going to give you a headache for the rest yeah, of your life. Yeah, that was going to give me a... a, a, a Ooh. And when I found out the kind of guy he was, God was very spot on with that. Mm. So I was protected, y'all. Like, in all of my poetry. I'm going to call this spade a spade, y'all. I was cutting up. <laughs> I was cutting up. I was cutting up <laughs> all of my poetry. <laughs> I was, I was, <laughs> I was cutting up. And when I poetry? tell you, God was like poetry, though. If if you say Jesus be offense, it was definitely Jesus be a birth control. He was, <laughs> Yo, he was controlling plan B. every. <laughs> ain't no plan B like plan J. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was like no, no, pimp, no, pimp, 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 every, pimp, pimp, every, every, like. Because I was 
it was supposed to happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was yeah, not. because somebody was praying for you. So what? My mother's prayers was not falling on nobody's so death. Don't head. sit there thinking that you getting by just because uh, of your own willpower or no. you so smart and you know how to No, somebody's, your prayer My saves. Was praying prayers for... of your mother, your father, is yeah. what saved you. And sometimes it be prayers of your grandparents, great grandparents long gone yeah. that is still, because God is a God that keeps his word. Yeah. You know, when he took, like, same thing with Abraham. Some, sometimes it's your great, great grandparents that prayed for the future and yeah. you're still benefit off of that. Yeah. It's not because you're so strategic. It's mm -mm. not because you're so smart, so calculated. So, no, mm -mm. no. Sometimes it's, it's just faithful. prayers because he's faithful. because God is faithful. Um, So after wow. I kind of stopped <laughs> the shenanigans, <laughs> the whole tree, that's the first. once I stopped, what I said the last time that you was weak at when I said shit tibbities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she got all the lingo. I thought my harlot was bad. Listen, I had to call a spade a spade. I mm -hmm. was cutting up. I was. Like too many too many men and But now this is so normal. So what? Be a hoe. Live your life. Why it's not judge? liberating. Okay. It's not liberating. Spiritual soul ties are real. Real. A lot of my chaos, like I said in the last video, a lot of my chaos came from sleeping with men that was already struggling. And I was literally and vice Become, versa. Becoming one with it. Yeah, and vice because that's what happens. Becoming vice versa too. With, with, with men, you sleep on it. Freaking Ashley, Kim, and Donna every other day. You picking up, you picking up. I was use this analogy. It's almost mm -hmm. like you walk around every time you go, you walking on the block. You pick up garbage, put it in your pocket. You keep walking, pick up garbage, put it in your pocket. By the time you get to the end of the block, you say, "Why do I stink? What do you mean, why do you stink? Mm -hmm. You picking up crap this whole time." I lay down with dogs. You get up with police. That's what they say. <laughs> That's what the old folks say. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. people don't. And that was so normalized. I'm like. No, 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 no. It's not about physical protection. You have to protect. And sage, we already talked about this. Yeah. Saging before the nigga come or the girl come and saging after they leave. Don't do nothing. <laughs> it smell good. Saying likes it too. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. First of all, it's, it's bad enough you having sex before mm. marriage. Yeah. And then you having sex with Tom, there's Dick, no, and there's Harry. There's no covering. There's no nothing. Nothing. You're not protected. Nope. I got tomato sauce on my pants. My bad, I'll clean it for you. And then after everything happens, you looking at God like, oh God, why were you? Mm -hmm. Dog. So then, after I stopped the poetry, <laughs> after I stopped that, um, <clears throat> I told y'all about the situation that made me like really feel like my life was in danger mm -hmm. and kind of just coming back to God overall with that. But God is faithful. It was kind of just like, okay, now you're back. Mm -hmm. And now I have to clear out all of the garbage you done brought with you. Because mm -hmm. your baggage was Dirt. different before you went and explored and did all of that. Now it's a whole different beast I got to get rid of. Mm -hmm. And so he started working overtime with me, communicating with me very frequent. Mm -hmm. um, me and my aspirations artistically, he was very clear with me about where I need to be. That if I'm not giving my gifts to him that I need, don't need to be in that space. Mm. So with like modeling and stuff like that and pursuing those things, um, I had gone down where I wanted to do like swimwear and all mm. of these different things. And I'm not gonna like demonize everything, but <clears throat> the industry definitely has an agenda. We spoke about it last week that they are banking on your ability to be blind. Mm -hmm. And I had a dream about a woman. I was at an industry party, very clear, I don't, this dream will never leave me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had a dream that I was in a, at an industry party and there was a woman that was in like dark. She just had like a black hat hoodie mm -hmm. situation, black tips, mm -hmm. like the like a, the black powder around mm -hmm. her fingertips. And she was like telling me to come with her. And I was at the party and I had been drinking. <clears throat> and she was just like, come with me. And I was like, no, I'm okay, like smiling. And then she touched me and I started to lose my consciousness. Like as she's walking with me. And I have the dream written down, y'all. I have the date that I had the dream and everything. I'm still doing that. Um, 7-29. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July. July of last year. I had that dream. And she basically, when she touched me, I lost all of my power. Like I just kept like losing my 
consciousness like I kept you know, feeling strong and then I was able to get away from her and she sent someone after me and he was just like no she's cool she's not me like she's fine like come on I said, no. and he took my phone and that's something that they actually do at industry parties they'll take your phone NDAs and all of that mm. that's something that they actually do so um he took my phone and I lost it I never got that deep I said before I got to it. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever been to one rap party. Yeah, yeah. Careful. Careful with that kind of stuff, guys, really. Because there's so many ritual behavior that mm. happens at those places, even to get in. But anyway, so um, he took my phone, and I wasn't able to find anybody. So now I'm running through this alley, and my friend um, in, the, in the dream, who um, she's one of my 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 bible sisters we able to talk and mm. and have powwows in a, in a dream she was just like come 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 she was like what's wrong why are you crying because i think i was like i look scared you mm. know and she was just like come and so she had my phone i don't know how she was able to get my phone from mm -hmm. him but she had my phone <clears throat> and she took me to her house and i just remember just crying in her lap i was like it was so scary she had like this power and i couldn't get away from her and i was just crying in her lap and then I dozed off. And then I woke up the n in the dream, woke up the next day, and we had gone to a church, and the church had robots, and all of this like new age stuff that mm. was like happening. I don't know if it was like trying to say, I don't know what that part of, still to this day, I don't know what that part of the dream means. <clears throat> but it was kind of just basically telling me like, what I felt God was communicating with me at that time was, I need to drop my desire to be famous in that moment like drop that desire to be famous what does because that? i me okay. i had a personal desire to be famous oh, because of okay. my gifts and talents mm -hmm. and you know you because i was a i i don't think i've ever shared this with you but my first commercial audition i was two years old you mm -hmm. know i was in performing arts at a very early age mm -hmm. commercial auditions at like 10 11 oscar my arena disney mm -hmm. like all kinds of stuff my mom was trying to get me into which i have and no interest in playing giant in that. Yeah, my, it's, my, I've my, been in the industry. It's not yeah, it. No, because what nope. they, what the, what I think the man was the the people at Disney when my mom took me to Connecticut, they were trying to isolate me from her, and yeah. so she spotted it and was like, nah. Yeah, they're weird. And she was they like, do nah, some like, weird, they, they try to get sacrifices their kids. with kids. Yeah. <clears throat> no, no, no. <clears throat> and so she wasn't down with it, and I never had a breakout moment as a child star. Or yeah, that was God blocking it too. Because God was protecting me, and so that dream kind of took that taste out my mouth completely Good. i was like i don't desire to be famous because if you desire to be famous when god gives you gifts your gifts is just to bring glory to him right. it's not to pursue being seen You're right. you may be seen as a result of it but that's not the goal and when that is the goal you'll do anything for it for it and so in that moment that was like a dream that i felt like god was just like see i'm telling you it's you're not what seeing you think what's happening when you get on social media and you see what these artists are doing there's a and there's is a spirit that you are picking up on yeah. and it's not a lie so don't pursue don't, it i have no you know? listen don't pursue that I, not saying like don't have goals and dreams and stuff but like if god didn't send you don't go yeah like i always say basically because even that testimony i keep bringing up and i showed you the guy all the rituals and all the satanist people had to do it sounds like hollywood yeah i have like and i remember i have a friend that told me once that I was like, it's so cute. You should get him to Marvin. No. Mm -mm. I've, I've been the there. I've alone. seen what these boys have to do to get a gig. I have no interest. Mm -hmm. It's scary. Yeah, it is. And then once they get a taste of it, like how <clears> it started <throat> too, you keep putting them in there. Now they're five, they six. They want to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And now they're adults or mm -hmm. they're teenagers and they're doing crazy things to get gigs and commercials and all the... No, I'm... No. Yeah. He's not... I don't care how cute he is. Yeah. Be cute in your house. <laughs> you want to be cute on somebody's camera. It's not happening. <laughs> be cute in your house. Okay. No, but yeah, that was, you know. That's and then cool. I had, you know, a moment where I was very solid on breaking certain habits. But the scripture is very clear about leaving your mind idol. It, uh, a spirit, one spirit to leave and then you clean up come. the house. But mm -hmm. then seven, seven more come. come in because you haven't done anything with the space. Mm -hmm. All you did was clean up. But you haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to, to run come back. in and occupy the space. Because mm -hmm. now Satan is like, oh, bet. Thanks for cleaning. I'm coming back. Coming back with more people. With more people. So make it harder next time. Uh huh. And Jesus, you know, in scripture, he said, evil has no place here. Like mm -hmm. when he's talking about 
he was like, evil has no place here. Right. Evil, has, evil has no reckoning here. So I started to say those things over myself. But Amen. the You're thing welcome. is, is like when you, um, when you just clean house and you don't create new habits, because mm. our brain, our mind is meant to create. It's meant to do those things. Right. So if you're not taking care of that stimulus from a new perspective right. where, where God would want you to handle it, you're still going to have those struggles and they're going to be actually more intense because now you know that you're not supposed to. Yeah. And so... Um, the saying it's not, he's yeah, breaking overtime to get you back. Working overtime, yeah. it's like, oh, don't worry about that, you're good, you know? And so I had backslid mm -hmm. and I had a dream um, where... There was a, a sir, like a ugly looking thing. I don't know, it was a white man, old, dirty looking kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, um, I own you. Mm -hmm. He was like, I own you. He was like, you can't get away from me, I own you. And so in that moment, mm -hmm. That's a good part of I was just like. You were slave to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was, and so in that moment, I said, oh, mm -hmm. I, I know, see what's yeah. happening. <laughs> I see what's happening. And so I was like, Nah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta conjure this. <laughs> we gonna have to work. Me and God gonna have to have a, you know, and I worked, I prayed over myself so much and changed my habits where like now my mornings look a certain way, my nights look a certain way, mm -hmm. my conversations look a certain way, what I digest on, circle, on social media looks yeah. a certain way, my friendships look a certain way, like, because that's the, that's the only way God can really manage you as a new creature mm -hmm. he'll do all the work he'll bring everything to your awareness right. but if you have not changed your environment yeah. you're still susceptible yeah. to that especially if you already have a compromised mm -hmm. spiritual immunity where you've kind of already been down that path already yeah. it's kind of easy for you to back because you know it it's good. comfortable exactly mm -hmm. so it's like no you have to change all of that and be intentional about it so people say affirmations i say scriptures over affirmations of Satan's way of saying, oh, speak positivity. That's all Satan's lingo. Yeah. Let, let's just call it for what it is. Yeah, it takes, it takes authority from God. You're trying right. To say, I'm affirming. You don't do anything, but you don't even know if you're going to wake up when you go to sleep. But yet you have the power to go affirm what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there was a woman that actually prophesied over me. And she said that, you know, I was sharing my testimony with her, what brought me back to God. And she said everything... You always, like, everything is a dream with you. Like, mm -hmm. she was able to spot it. And she was just like, I believe you may have the gift of, like, foretelling. And not foretelling. Mm -hmm. Foretelling is being able to see something that is, has not come yet. Mm -hmm. Foretelling is present interpretation mm -hmm. of something that's happening, which is true. God, I've never had a dream of something that was coming. Mm -hmm. It was always giving me understanding of what I was in the midst of. Um, but she did say it. She said, I believe you have the gift of forth telling. But then she told me to be mindful of my um, explorative nature. Mm. And I was offended, y'all. I was like, Spread what offense you mean? Said, I was like get him. excuse me? Ugh. But that's how spread offense works, yeah. right? You don't even want to receive the message because yeah. Satan's just like, I was just be like, offended. Yeah. And I, I just was like, who's she talking to? <laughs> like, I'm trying to figure out who she's talking to. I'm like, Miss, I just met you. I don't know you. The, right. But right. you know what? <laughs> She was so on point because mm -hmm. the minute I had an um, interest in someone, I started to dilute my language to like feel more comfortable in conversation with them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's what she was talking about. Immediately, like mm -hmm. when I knew, I was like, oh God, mm -hmm. I'm not disowning. I can't, I gotta be able to stand firm, firm in what in you believe and what I believe. And when you are someone that has exposed yourself to a lot of universal understandings, you can have a conversation with all kinds of people, right. but that's not what you're intended to do when you're so in light. It's mm -hmm. not, I, yeah, I can engage, but am I supposed to? Or am I supposed to bring light and preservation to people? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can come to me about something and I have knowledge about it, but I am supposed to clock it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm supposed to say, yeah, but that's not God like. Yeah, be aware, be that's watchful. That's not Christ like. Yeah. That's, not, be that's not God's way. Yeah, that's satanic. You gotta be able to call it like that's demonic. That's, you know, you have to be able to call it. And I'm just now getting that confidence. Mm -hmm. I would very much like kind of dilute and, da -da -da, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, swing and sway. Cause I, did, I just, just didn't want those con kinds of confrontations, especially because I felt, oh, and this is this is the trick on the enemy, that shame and guilt. He uses it against you all right. the time. It's like, who are you? You ain't got no place to tell nobody nothing. I'm the perfect place to tell somebody something because I been did there. it, you Stupid. know. But you don't clock that right away. In the in the midst of it, I'm like, you're right. No. I was definitely 
yeah. you know, bring it up to you. Oh, you was but cold, you're not doing. You was this. You was that. You were right. this. You mm-hmm. did that. Like, and he'll flood me with all of that, and then I'm just like, I'm not the person but to address the these things. Person. But you're the perfect person. What, what did we say last week? What, what am I saying? Tell you to do, do the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect person. Perfect person. Yeah. And so that that kind con- that kind of that was the last lie that I felt like I was able to really crack the mold to where I am now, like present day. Mm-hmm. But that was like the the final ends of my journey was kind of like those little nooks and crannies of just old desires. He got, desires, he like, got cleaned up the whole house. Yeah, like everything had to go. Everything had to go. Um, my perspective on so many different things has changed, and I'm just grateful he kept those promises with me. Like, yeah, because I was losing my mind. Who like, would let you do that, Tom? I was losing my mind. Who would let you lose your mind? And it wasn't even like... And we're not talking about losing your mind like, oh, I'm so... T-. No, no, no. Literally. No peace. No peace. No peace. Lose peace. your joint. No peace. Like, <laughs> I was having dreams, like, just nightmares. And you said you wasn't sleeping. Yeah, but my sleep pattern was terrible. Like, I couldn't... I was, like, a permanent insomniac for, like, mm. a year. I was not sleeping well at all. And... God, it was one time that um, God literally woke me up and told me to read. Mm. And I did. Started reading Ephesians. I was like, I'm up. I can't sleep. What do you want me to do? Mm. And he was dealing with that shame and that guilt that Mm. I was feeling all those years. After, you know, when someone assaults you, you feel... Mm yuck yeah. you know like you feel contagious like if i would if i i can't have nothing natural or holy or mm. pure because it started out wrong for me yeah, yeah. like you just the feel, way you view sex is totally different from yeah, how regular. like you just feel everything is just bad yeah and that shame and that guilt when i read ephesians covered like you know mm. from one to seven i think it's like total nine chapters mm. but when i read the full ephesians and that scripture talked about being made new and all of those things passing away. I was just like, yes, I needed to hear that. That was like medicine for my mind because you think all this time, like some things are just not reversible. Like I can't yeah. fix that. That's a curse I can't break. And it's like, well, mm-hmm. yeah, you can't break any curses, but with me, you can. You can, right? You know, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Right. So it's like you're greater with God than you are just mm-hmm. aimlessly trying to be here. And so that was... That was it for me. That's if I had to put a, a stamp on a end point, that would be the end point for mm-hmm. me. Cause it didn't take much convincing. The seed was sown yeah. from the beginning. I was, right. you know, like I wasn't one of those people that had to go all the way out into the woods, into the trickery. I was able to spot and call a spade a spade pretty quickly. Yeah. So five years max, it wasn't too much time, but it was enough yeah. to where it took me a minute to clean things up. I say 25 was the year I came back. And I'm going to be 27 in a couple of weeks. Mm. And it took about two years for me to reach that level of like... But you think that... Because I feel like if you have gotten that deep mm. into actually practicing some things for real, for real. Yeah. Outside of just crystals. But like... You know, people are into witchcraft. They really deep in it. Yeah. That might take you... I mean, God could do anything. He can. You know, but the healing and the house cleaning... Sometimes it takes some. The it guy does. that's watching it, watch, it took him ten years after coming to Grace mm. to clean up house fully. That All the lot, sacrifices, that the of... dedication, the umbilical cord in this country, and I have so much. It's just like yeah. so. All to say, like those who are, and I feel like a lot of black people. I feel like Africans and Caribbean. Some of us already know what's up because Voodoo, Hulu, whatever is raw back home. It ain't mm. no Disney. It's not. Pretty fine, like I like to say, right? They have Disney. Okay, I called it. They haven't made it pretty, so we don't get. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm trying to be not swindled. Like, if I was born here and raised here, you would think, oh yeah, mermaid. So Christianity what? Christianity is a huge deal for us. For black people, it is. For... That's why I was trying to get it. I feel like for black people, both black Americans, um, Africans, Caribbeans, uh, all of us, was such a big thing. But I feel like. Y'all actually had a front row seat to that. Voodoo and witchcraft is not popular in America. Like, for Southern black people, yeah. it's not that popular. The most you'll get is probably, like, hoodoo. Mm. But even then, it's more of a medicinal perspective where they'll go and get, like, a herb or a rose bush mm. and, you know, like, kind of, like, pray over you or whatever if you have, like, some kind of sickness or illness mm-hmm. or whatever. But it's not, it's not, like, straight up, like, 
It was bulk. Them said it was it was raw. It's raw back home. It's not like that. It's either. not that, like that here. So like to see so many black people they'll, they'll being they'll grown, grown growing up and being the church, especially even from the south. Baptist, being the church. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Saying so Kojic, many of them. You know, all the denominations. Right. And I'm not saying that the church haven't done wrong. Yes, we have. Because if anything, the human touch, we pervert, we mess it up, we just yeah. a mess. Okay? Point blank, period. Mm-hmm. Even down to beliefs and religion. Well, I didn't want to say religion, but you know you know what I mean. Yeah. Down to religion, we, we mess everything up. Mm-hmm. We are, do I say Jesus have the worst PR company? We are not. That's why we're not meant to defend him. Right. He knows we're not we good are anyway. not the <laughs> like, best representatives. It's like, okay. I understand. As you, <laughs> listen, as much as I love Jesus, I have. I Listen, mm-hmm. I don't curse some people out. Not proud of it. But that part of the human part of you. <laughs> not proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. The human part of you just come out. So, yes, the church have done wrong. Some people grew up in the in a church where it's very. I go to church, but from Monday through Saturday, I'm a hot mess. Yeah. I'm cursing you. Wow, I'm just, you know what I'm saying? But in, in church, like, hallelujah. Yeah, come yeah, on. Lying. So a lot of people have have a lot of church hurt. And because of that church hurt, go ahead. Especially because, like, of slavery. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. They weaponized scripture a lot. Yeah. So, like, the lies that, it told. That was, like, the, the thing that you're going to use my book. You know how, like... That kind of psychology messes you up. It's like so. It's because I'm sure, like you, you have the Akan Bible. Like mm-hmm. those our words. Like that. That's our. That's our belief. You know, it became white people were exposed to. Can you please explain it? Because a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. Talk about that real quick. The well, the Moors. The Moors had a lot to do with um, those uh, European empires getting their hands mm-hmm. during the just in the period they invaded. Um, North Africa was able to get their hands on 8,000 years worth of religious context. Mm. So they were able to take in and create a satire, rebrand and market and do all of the things, you know, Constantine, he made it seem like he was the father of Christianity because he made um, it a permanent belief system in his country. But it wasn't his, you know, the Moors were hired and they were nomadic and they traveled and they were allowed to uh, share that faith mm-hmm. with them, but it wasn't theirs. It was not theirs. It was not a European belief. Yeah. It wasn't. It was very understood that it was an African faith up until that time. And that's when, you know, the satire began of the marketing and then of St. Nick mm-hmm. and Santa Claus and all of that other stuff. It, it began to kind of unfold. And then they use it against us. And then they use it against us. Not reading the whole scripture too. No. They would take out the parts. Remember the part that uh, 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 slaves obey your master, but they would not yeah. read what's after that. Right. And, and really mess up the what slave even mean, you know? Because in the Bible, slave is not even. No. It's a domestic servant. It's not. Um, somebody owes somebody money. If I gave you cattle and you couldn't pay off your cattle, you're going to come work on my farm. X amount of years. X amount of years to until your cattle is paid off. That's what slavery meant. Not, Not you, this crap that we got going. Go human on. beings with hearts as cargo. That's a completely different ball game. And, uh, to not consider them human. Ugh. I want to be there when God is giving that judgment. I need to see. I need to see. I'm front row, front row seat. seat. On my white horse. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just horse. saying, you know, there's a lot of pain there. Yeah. So, Southern, you know, black people, black Americans specifically, like, that are hip to that kind of stuff. That's where that thing of, yeah. I want to do what my ancestors did. Yeah, because I'm like, oh, because it's, so it's, many people were Southern. I remember my husband talk about it all the time. Being a Southern church, like, the spirit is there. Yeah. It's more, it's more watered down. On, it's not, because we can't say the whole West. Because he said, like, you know, it reminds him of an African church. The spirit is there. Like, God is there. Over here on the east, they see people running in the aisles. It's nothing for them to cry and okay. be on the floor. They give God their own. Oh, you get what I'm saying? So to see change. people, black people, black Americans, mm-hmm. and Africans are turning to um, come in growing up in the church home, the, to not be opposite, just going to the enemy's side. I'm just saying, like, damn. 
Damn. It's just pain. It's just a pain. And that's what Satan uses. He uses pain to get you yeah. away we from We talked about it last week. Anger. Mm-hmm. That's the, anger that's the yep. best best way to sign yourself up yeah. to a contract with him. <laughs> like, but that that was what it was. You know, they used that completely against us. Um, there's a reason why a lot of us, our names, the ethnic names, ha- mean something about God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were already very attached to the divine. We knew who God was already. We had a very huge understanding of who God was in scripture. Has the Negro spirituals and all and that it, stuff. Yeah. That wasn't when you talking about No wasn't teaching us no damn no, um, we knew the chariots. We believe we knew what angels were capable of doing. You know, like Harriet Tubman was very clear on I'm about to say tell her, her yeah, story is just crazy. Watching her um autobiography, well not her autobiography, but the film that they made, mm. they were very transparent about how she walked with God. She, she did. said it out of her she mouth. She did. Oh, such a such a story. With God, like there was angels. She knew that she was Not set alone. to do that. Mm. That was her calling. That was her purpose. It was audible speaking. Yeah. And she knew. Back, I was, you know, like I was reading a, a book that was talking about like old medicine mm. and how slaves would use medicine to heal themselves you know to them mm. all kinds of food foolishness that they're dealing with in the mm. fields and things like that and they said that you know the, one of the women in the testimony she said if when i was looking for god i found him in my field mm. but he was telling her what to use he does to that. heal herself he does that and so he was telling her like oh you get the sap from the tree if you're trying to soothe mm. right he was communicating with them and so Listen. I'll give him one. He does that because I always just think like all these remedies. Mm-hmm. If you have fibroids, Africans don't know what to mix together to get rid of that fibroids. You have this. I'm like, all this modern. Who told you that? It got to be God to let you know. Put this together. I'll give one example. I remember when I was used, I was working on set. It was for Alicia Keys. I came in as a, a, a wardrobe stylist. Um, Cause they were doing reshoots. Y'all see these nails? <laughs> she got her hands up. I'm just mm-hmm. like, y'all gotta get a look, good look out, babies. <laughs> uh, so she was doing reshoots, and one of the characters, uh, one of the uh, actors, had got paint on their jacket. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there like, what the hell? Obviously, for continuity, that was not there. So it has to be. I'm like, God, I don't know what to do. Like, how am I gonna get this paint off this boy's jacket? Mm-hmm. And literally. All the bleed. That's how, that's, how, that's what made me understand or how God helped our ancestors come up with all these different mm-hmm. remedies. God said, okay, get alcohol. Get um, cloth. I was like, okay. Literally every step. I said, I got alcohol? He said, no. I said, well, I need alcohol. I need cloth. They went and brought it. Um, brought it. I said, God, no, what do I do? Literally. He said, okay. Pour the alcohol in the cloth. Or pour it in the cloth. And I put a little bit on the, he said, pour a little bit on the chair. I put on, I started rubbing. I said, God, nothing's happening. Just keep, just keep, just keep rubbing. <laughs> Here come the panic. <laughs> I said, God, nothing's happening. Keep going. And it started coming off. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh my gosh. We were so worried that that, how are we going to get this out? Mm-hmm. We know what to do. Da, da, da. I, I was like, was I had that cheat code. I know it was, <laughs> Hey. I know it was, hey. Oh, me. Listen, it's true though. Right? And it's it was like, true. how the ever surprised? I said, girl, I'm surprised right with you. All right? <laughs> She's like, oh, oh, oh you oh, don't know who I work no with. Idea. I got a cheat code up in heaven. Like, God, what? What are we doing? I don't know. What the hell? They came to me like looking worried, like, so you got paint on your mm, jacket? What the heck like, am I supposed to do? Why would you come to me with this question? <laughs> right. But they knew who to come to. Okay. He told them who to but come to. God, I believe 100 percent just even from my little experience like yeah. he definitely it been times where i've been sick mm. i said god i'm feeling like this what should i do get this get that mix mm-hmm. that drink that my husband was sick yeah god and told him get some tonics okay yeah tis nasty sad but it worked when i was um i had like a but africans be doing tonics black americans been doing tonics what do you think years. it came from who do you think gave them that idea Boy. <laughs> bit this. We call them. Go get centuries, some bit this. Centuries. Okay. Centuries. Um, my, uh, I was had like a little bit of a health, a health situation, and so I was praying. I prayed to God. I was mm. just like, Lord, I don't know what's going on. 
um, I need like a herbal solution for this. And so I had a dream that me and my mother was in a tent because my mom, she makes like body butters and stuff mm. like that. So me and my mom was in the tent selling her products in the dream. And a woman came up to me and was just like, can you put dandelion in my oil for me? And I was like, okay. So I took some dandelion flowers and I put it in the bottle, shook it up and handed it to her. I woke up. I looked up that dandelion the next day. Does everything. It had to do Does with everything. everything. I was like, you work fast. <laughs> I was like, that was shot too. I was Dandelion. Like, and but that just the lady just can you put this in my oil? And it just stuck out. I never forgot it. But you know what? That's a brand. I'm not gonna call them out, but that's a brand that they does a lot of feminine products. Mm. And when you read the story, they got it from their ancestors, mm. gave them the concoction. All to say that. Sing could do that too. Oh yeah. Well, that's what happened in the Exodus when the the man the men was able to do the exact same thing and the Prince of Egypt kind of downplays that because yeah. they make it seem like it was like a knockoff version. They did the same right. thing. Satan could also give you ingredients to mix up. Just the difference between God and it's like who do you choose to go to? You can either go to God to get your source or to get your resource, I should say. Yeah. Or you can go to Satan to get your resources Whatever on what to do. But there. just know that with God is free. Mm-hmm. But Satan comes with a sacrifice oh, and a yeah. payment. But we ain't talking no dollars. He don't care about your money. No. He wants your soul. There's not enough money in the world. He he would try to give that to Jesus. He know all this is nothing but cotton and, Tree. and, and trees and <laughs> all this nonsense. He don't care about that. Yeah. Just know that with him, there is a sacrifice and it's your soul. Yeah. So you would, if you want a quick fix, yeah, sure, go to Satan. Your soul at, at the expense. But it's what you learn in the process that builds character. Okay. That's why when people try to quick... You, anything that you want to last is going to take time. Let like, God, because God, it's he like, uses it's everything. Like you, you using whatever mischief the devil is gonna permit with you, um, to get something, instant gratification, mm-hmm. and then there's no journey. There's no, no people don't want the journey. Built. It's too hard. How, so how are you gonna sustain it? You're gonna find yourself continuing to make these anxious. Deals. Yeah, because you always have to. You gotta keep making renewing these contracts and these deals. Yeah. In your spiritual in the spiritual realm because you're trying to spearhead and something then that... come out with anxiety depression yeah. uh, uh, what what is most people dealing with nowadays every time it's i see anxiety it anxiety and depression that's the top the two. main thing top two and mm-hmm. I, I everyone i said y'all don't think that all of y'all dabbling all these universal universe this and all these what they call it grand rising grand closing grand opening <laughs> what they call it? full moon half moon eclipse she said. <laughs> Like, what they call it? <laughs> she said grand closing. <laughs> like, Wait, come no, on. For real though. All these things are Because they don't want to say it. good morning. Right. Like, I hate that. Why are we morning? You know what pisses Please, me off too? When did y'all get so semantic? Right. Good morning. Why are we playing with semantics? Gra- what did we say? Don't be get pissing me off too? Grand Happy so- solar return. I said, nigga. Oh, oh, to keep your birthday. That, keep that yes. solar. Yes. These are damn solar happy, system. Happy personal new year and all of this other stuff. Like, okay, y'all. Okay, that solar return. Be, solar return is wild. Because who, do you know what a solar fixture is? Like, to return from what? <laughs> Where did I go? I've been here the whole t- how, I, I, how do we know we're still in the same place we started? <laughs> Yo. How do we know that? Okay. So all this damn grand this, grand that, and I'm just like, and y'all wonder why so many of us, and, uh, I, and saying I say and all of that, it's amen, what? y'all. When they say I say, what's that? It's a confirmation from like ancestral practices. Like if you, like if somebody say something, you agree with them, how we say amen, they say that. It's mm-hmm. A-S and then that E. You've seen it before, oh, okay. probably in writing. But yeah, they say that. And it's a, some kind of spirit, like, I'm confirming this with you. I'm affirming this with you. Like, I'm in agreement with you. Stop, y'all. Yeah, because even as a Christian, I don't say amen to everything. I don't say amen to everything, but also, it, you're confirming with the dead. <sighs> you don't know that people don't call a spade a spade, but like... There's people that'll say that that aren't into ancestral practices. They'll just say it like, oh, because I'm I'm black. This is black. This is what black people say. You are confirming something with the dead. Be careful. And let the dead be dead. Them niggas are dead. They're dead. It's Stay okay. Dead. Be, and don't have to have a conversation. And because of all like of what my ancestors particularly went through, I do feel like 
this thing of like I'm 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 happy that I'm in the place that I'm in, but I don't feel an allegiance to them. It's no. you gotta let they the, they serve their purpose. They did what they were supposed to do. I couldn't have did it. No, I probably would have died I the first day. I ain't gonna hold you. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm not the one to be like, I'm not my ancestors or I'm stronger than them or whatever. I'm not. You gotta be strong. I'm not stronger to than deal them. with that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I give to, I give I take my hat off. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, let the dead rest. Yeah. You know, like you let them, they deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that part. <laughs> they deserve the rest. Remember like, why y'all keep waking them up trying to pray, pray to them? Let what, them sleep. <laughs> what was it? What was the king? Um, oh, when Israel wanted a new king, God gave them the king. I forget his name, and he had gotten Saul. So, and he has gotten um, and was it Solomon that was helping him out or Elijah? No, it was Solomon. I forget. But he told him he had to get rid of all the witchcraft and all that stuff from the country. Yeah. He did it, but he wasn't being listening, so he did his own thing and went to one last witchcraft left to help him figure out <laughs> how to... Not one less witchcraft. Because it was one left, okay? To help him figure out how to win the war. Because yeah. usually, I believe it was Solomon. He usually goes to Solomon for wisdom on how to do it, and God will communicate that with him, and they will tell him what to do, da da, da. Mm-hmm. Went to one last witch- witchcraft, and the witch-, witch lady called up Solomon from the dead, like, yo. And he was like... Why do you awaken me? <laughs> like aggravated. I, like, when you sit aggravated. down, just like stop waking these niggas up. Let them sleep. Well, I shouldn't aggravated. call them niggas. So that's that's the wrong time. Right? Yeah. Not yeah. Nice. Not nice. Stop waking them up, y'all. Let them sleep. Y'all. Let them sleep. <laughs> talking about talking to my ancestors. They don't. They. They, they don't. That wasn't the goal. That wasn't the goal when they. They want to sleep. They. They tired. They, they took tired. enough lashes. They just sent enough Negro spirituals. They just want tired. to rest. Tired. They and y'all keep tired. waking them up to. Talk about what? You want a Range Rover? Nigga, fix, go get a job. <laughs> like, that's you, the quick fix. Make your money. Okay. Make it was a good money. day. Let it, okay. It be positive. <laughs> Talk to Jesus. Have a positive mindset. Listen to some worship Talk and you're going to have some good day. But leave these people alone. Yeah, that's not it. That's not it, y'all. No altar. Take your altars down. Yo, I heard Take about that. Okay. You know, I heard they had to um, have an altar. Um, I never got that Summer deep Walker. In. I, I heard she has an altar, in, but I was reading a book that was telling me to, oh. and I was like, like critical. <gasps> mm. Something in my spirit was just like, nah, <laughs> we ain't doing like people that. have a whole shrine. Like I, yeah, yeah, that's, cr- that's like, scary. People don't know like, what they're doing. No, and here's the thing: you don't even know if this person, because when they die, they're dead. Yeah, so you don't know who you're waking up. Right, you don't know what you're going to do. You don't get. know who you she waking up. She got Hitler for all we Something know. Something you... Mm-hmm. <laughs> you <laughs> messing around and you'll get goddamn... What's his name? Putin? <laughs> what are you them niggas? Dead, though. Oh. <laughs> 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 you need to be. Anyway, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Stay alive. <laughs> Please. Keep keep giving us chaos. <laughs> I'm but crying. you don't know what you getting. Like you mess right. around and summon something else because you're so busy playing around. If I listen, knowing me, knowing me, when I go, somebody try waking me up. I'm I'm gonna send Mulan. I'm gonna be like, <laughs> y'all keep messing with me. I'm gonna send somebody else. I'll be like, they talking to you. You got this. There you go, guys. Your turn. <laughs> yeah, like you think you're talking to somebody and you, they don't speak English because you playing. Right. Like, I'm talking, no. Oh, they're speaking to me in our ancestral language. Yeah, no, they're no. speaking German, kid. No. And you speak English. That's what's yeah, happening. Because I sent somebody else because why are you calling me? Right. I'm here. Eat, eat my, <laughs> come on. So imagine eating, God. Imagine like, eating heaven, heavenly food. Then somebody calling you down to have a conversation. To talk about nothing. In the woods. I'll be, oh, I'll be so mad. <laughs> I'll be so mad. Do you see this full of God, yeah. you see this? Do you see what's happening? Say fire and brimstone. <laughs> no, we're they, not doing that. They keep calling me. They okay. keep calling. Stop calling my phone. <laughs> okay. That's what I would do. I'm you know what that's reminded me of? Mm-hmm. I think it was you that shared this. I, remember the dream that you said you had? Where, I don't know if it was hell, but God was showing that whatever you was... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had Can a you dream. talk about that? I think that's crazy. That just reminded me of that. Oh, yeah. I had a dream. Um, That was... I was in high school. No, no, no. I was in college. And I had a dream about what hell looked like. I was on a plane, I was on a flight, and we was on a plane, and people were like doing the wildest things on these plane, on this plane, y'all. Like there was like a orgy situation. It was like stuff that was happening was on wild. the plane. In my seat, I could see the wildness happening. The plane landed into like this real low, like deep valley, and I couldn't see anything Service. above the yeah. valley. And so I get off and I'm walking, 
and you just I just see like people stuck in this cycle of like just doing whatever they were that they went to hell for they were stuck on repeat doing it yeah. and it reminds me of like have you ever seen crazy people like that be walking I mean I live in New like, York I see them all the time yeah. <laughs> yeah we do <laughs> and but you see like they have the same conversations mm-hmm. they're stuck having those same conversations and so yeah no. I, that was the dream that I had. I just saw that they were stuck doing what they went to hell for. They were stuck doing that. On you know, um, Damon had a dream about um, Kobe. Mm-hmm. And he was stuck playing Jordan over and over and over. Mm-hmm. But it was like a fake Jordan. It wasn't a real Jordan. Yeah. But he was just stuck just trying to beat him. There was a lot of like That's different. Crazy. There were different professions that I saw. I don't want to get too vulgar on here. But it was just different professions that I saw. Like I was just looking around. And everything that they were doing in the real world, they were stuck doing. doing. They could not stop. So if you was a daddy on earth, and that's you just like sleeping Tom, Dick, and Harry, they were stuck. You gonna be stuck? Sleeping. No, there was a literal like, pro- like, yeah, in the dream, stuck doing the, like a line. Just oh, it's stuck. Well, torture. That's torture. Stuck. 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 That's torture. So I was just like, man, this is. This is not funny. <laughs> like, yeah, I was like, I this ain't laughs. a joke. I, you know, but yeah, I know, we got a weird thing with that. Like, <laughs> we laugh at stuff that we not Yo, supposed to when laugh I was younger, at. When somebody died, I would start laughing. Because it's, it's a nervous tick. Yeah, it's a nervous tick. And I'm like, like guys, I got a heart, I promise, but I don't know why I'm laughing. Yeah, like, this is kind of intense. But it's like a shock. Yeah. Um, I'm going to learn the different stages of uh, grief or death. First is a shock. First is... It's, it, I think first is like disbelief, denial, then shock. Denial, oh, yeah. yeah. And you start laughing because like, nah, you're joking. Now yeah, you're laughing. joking. No, no, you're joking. It's, no, it's like, it's real. And then it's like, blame. Right. Now, how did they, t-? you stop blaming yeah. everybody. I remember, yeah. Like I shared my story with uh, my, staff, my staff that passed. It was, I blamed myself. I said, oh, it's my fault. Maybe I should never give her the position. Maybe she was too stressed mm. out. Da, 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 da. It wasn't me. Mm-mm. Really out. Yeah. Time. You know, so yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Everybody was stuck on repeat. There's a lot of different But that's professions. I'ma just say that that I saw in the dream and they were stuck doing it over and over and over again. And they couldn't get out. Mm-hmm. I wasn't there for long. I just went, I was walking and I just was seeing it. Like God, please don't stuck me. Like, get me out of here. It's like this is kind crazy yeah like because they were doing it on the plane mm. and so when the plane landed and everybody got off this is what you want to do that was when they were stuck doing it now you're doing this for forget not forever. life you're doing this for eternity. eternity that's scary eternity that you see when you say hell is fire I'm, i don't know i'm not god but if it's not just fire and it's that i have to read more to even clarify and is that me mm-hmm. stuck doing your desires that you had on earth that made you stray far from God. You're stuck yeah. doing the old. I just remember like oh. that specific image of Imagine that. Imagine having sex over. Stuck. My vagina would hurt. Nope. <laughs> no, she was stuck. Like stuck. That's what I remember. Stuck. That is scary. Mm-hmm. And it was like a line. And I just was like, wow. I don't want that for my eternity. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. That's right. So yeah, that was when I had that dream. I was like, "Ooh, that was heavy." Can't relate. <laughs> Not going. <laughs> It'll be a cold day. <laughs> oh, I refuse I, to be I, that person. I was like, "Not going." Right. But never be me. I'm chilling. Not like that. I ain't chilling like that. I get it. But no, no, not me. No. I was very clear about that. I made that decision. Oof. That was intense. But sometimes God will meet you where, where he needs to meet you. If you're that person with your ears on here who make you feel or see, mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying? And um, listen, like for me, my experience, all God has to do with me was some sense, some things. But I had my dreams too. Um, he got show. I mean, one time, I'm not going to go into it. He showed me a dream two times. I said, all right, we're going to the third one. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes Thursday finals. Yeah. Got it. Okay, God heard you. Street strikes. You're out. So the second time, I said, don't say anymore. Don't say no I got, more. I, I, I got it. I got it. You know, there been times where my thing had God just like, all right, I'm not talking to you anymore until you, yeah. figure, you t- until you stop. Mm-hmm. And I stop hearing his voice. I'm like, 
No. This relationship is way too important to sacrifice yeah. for this crap. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. You gotta go. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, um, this was good. <laughs> this was good. So those playing with these spirits out here and all these universes, worshiping the universe and Oh, stop, guys. You're like, and here, please, please, like, yeah. understand that, like, that was our bonding, too. I think, uh, like, the friendship definitely bloomed between because we were able to, like, talk talk about those kinds of things. You have to heal, like, the and same as banking on your brokenness, but yeah. Oh, that's a word, banking on your brokenness. That's a word. He is, you know, any kind of hurt trauma and you don't want any dream to be deferred you know any goal that god has for you to be deferred because you just don't want to do the work and it hurts it hurts Mm -hmm. it is hurt it hurts to go through that process i know she knows and i know because we've been through the same crap it hurts no one said it's going to be a a, a walk in the park Mm -hmm. that crap hurts having to relive those memories and see those visions of those those traumatic moments yeah. it hurts but you have to go through it to get to the side because satan is he's oh my god he's standing 10 toes down on that brokenness yeah. on that hurt to keep you in a cycle of just self-sabotage that's what he wants to yep. do and so you gotta let your heart break mm. I, I i was so afraid of accepting what happened to me yeah because that was what breaks your heart that's yeah. what breaks your heart so acting like everything is all good and drowning yourself in all of the things that are catastrophic to your yeah. life <clears throat> it's running from something yeah. being like super like po- you know power hungry regarding like mm. my, my body and things like that that allowed me to act like i was never a victim mm. but i had to let my heart break like yeah. i really had to just let my heart break i was a victim I was and it was a long night and it was a situation that I had to like really mm-hmm. just allow my heart to break in that yeah. way because once that happened I was able to then like allow God to put the pieces back together mm-hmm. but your healing is in what you're avoiding yeah. so if you're avoiding to like really face that junk head on and you want to act like everything is all well listen and it comes in different forms Yeah. my yeah. avoidance was I don't want to have kids I don't want to get married yeah. God said, that's not what I that's have for you. That's not what I have for you. And look. <laughs> look at me. Okay. You're doing both. So, right. And doing it mighty well, my so, God. <laughs> Thank you. But it goes so many different ways. It's not always yeah. you want to sleep with everybody. Sometimes it's just, I want nothing to, to do, do with, with it. No, like nothing. Nothing, you know, to, do nothing to do with any type of relationship. I'm a right side. I said, God, look. I'm cool with just you. Me and you, cool. Make money in my bank. Take care of myself. We straight. But God knew that that was coming from place of hurt fear. and broken and fear. fear. He's like, no, 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 no. We you can't to... do that. We gotta yeah. unpack that because mm-hmm. you limit yourself. You limit yourself. And I'm not somebody, listen, I don't like talking about the devil a lot, really, because I really don't F with him like that. Yeah, we don't do him. Do he, and he's not all that, you feel me? He's not all that powerful, for real. It's all about how, in regards to But what, God is bigger. In regards to what? You oh, know what okay. I'm saying? Like, power in Cause regards I'm just saying to that cause what? Sometimes some, some people sleep on what he's capable. Of. Yeah, you under, if you underestimate, then now. you'll then you'll go as far as you. Because we got you can go. I, yeah, yeah. we made that mistake before. We got of course. Like, well, okay, yeah. but he is bigger than that. Yeah, way way bigger. And I, the reason why I say that is because I'm not a person that wanna wants to come from the fear tactic. Yeah. Situation. I kind of want to come from the angle of less talk about what is actually going on here yeah. because my desire to be in God's place was because I thought God mishandled me mm, so yeah. I was upset you yeah. know like I was upset I was just like how can you let this happen right. you know like everything that I had gone through and even like my heart breaking with my relationship with my dad and feeling like all the men in my life really didn't do what they were supposed to do mm-hmm. that heartbreak I had to face that because for years I was like is that my fate Mm. Like, if I don't, it don't get no better than that for me. You kidding me? You know what I'm saying? Like, I had to let my heart break in that moment and just be like, you know what? Let me be that brokenhearted little girl and just feel that feeling so that I can be a, an empowered woman that knows that through God, I have 100% control over what I do. And if I do God's will, my life is going to turn out completely yeah. different. You know what I'm saying? But if you avoiding it. Yeah. But that's what he said to come like little children. Yeah. I remember I had a group of friends that were not good for me. 
and I remember <laughs> I was a baby probably like two or three years old sitting in God's lap Jesus lap with the whole garb whatever typical Jesus that we see but obviously that's not how he looked mm-hmm. and he, I'm crying and he just creeped me in the dream yeah he's like and I'm like they keep hurting me why do they keep hurting me mm-hmm. and he just said comforting me mm-hmm. comforting me and he was like in the dreams, they just mm. don't hang out with them. <laughs> it's critical, y'all. Take care of y'all kids because it's critical. By the age of six, you are who you're gonna be. Mm-hmm. When you have those first six years of your life, cognitively, they matter so much. Yeah. So if you can be very mindful of where your children go and praying yeah. over your kids and yeah. all of that, because what? though what? that that's what happens. That pivotal moment. That moment oh. is something because then. You spend so much of your life having a childhood you gotta recover from. Yeah. That's hard. That's a foundation. You that is the foundation. You don't, you don't wanna have a childhood you gotta recover from. And that's why people tap into all of the spiritual things that make them feel like they're God. You mm-hmm. know, because I, I don't trust God. Yeah, it's a that was one. It's I, a lack of trust. I didn't, t- I, didn't, I didn't go into the spiritual stuff, but there were certain areas of my life I didn't let God touch. I'm like, mm, God, you are great at many things, but this, you suck. You did not do well, so mm, I got it. <laughs> so it's like you have to come like ch- little children. That's it's biblical, okay? Mm-hmm. Because little ch- children are dependent yeah. on you for everything. But we can't come in halfway depend on God, but on the other side we just like okay, we can do it. No, 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 mm-hmm. fully depend on Him. You know, and that was my part. I was just like God, look, you're great at many things, but this part relationships and my you didn't do a good job. So I'm gonna do myself. Mm-hmm. Um, take care of everything else, God. So I can't operate like that. Yeah. I need all, all of, of you. you. Mm. Not just some of you. I need all of I'm you. you. I got to heal the whole body. Mm-hmm. Mind, body, spirit, soul, everything. Everything needs okay. repair. It um, all needs repair. Okay. So, and honestly, <coughs> your whole lifetime, you you are forever going to be under construction. Oh, a word. Forever going to be under forever construction. Forever going to be under construction. It's true. Because you're always going to be dealing with things you need to. Because we live in a broken world. So, stuff is always going to be happening. But you have to be able to understand that. I'm not perfect because you're not. I'm always going to be under construction because you're never complete until we leave this place. Mm-hmm. Okay? And you're always going to be dependent and need God for any and everything. Yeah. You know, but you have to, whether if it's... Relinquish that control. You have to, and you got to let God heal you. You got to relinquish that control. That was my biggest thing. Like, like I was saying off, I'll say it again, but like it was kind of just like a temper tantrum. Like my entire spiritual journey was me kicking up dust about things that I was just, and I didn't realize it yeah. you know what I'm saying trying to like, attention I didn't realize it but yeah I was like trying to get his attention I'm like it, if you're this guy that you say you are and everybody keeps saying all of this stuff then why yeah. you know what I'm saying and he showed me if yeah. I just would I, everything I asked for I got and I, got, I don't know if I said it last week but we went to that event with Tim Ross and you know he said that God Jesus didn't die for not only did he die for you, but he also died as you. Yeah. So if, when you was getting abused, whether if it's physical, sexual, uh, 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 mental, uh, verbal, verbal, whatever abuse, whatever situation, parents split, whatever it is, he was you. Mm-hmm. That kid that was standing there, that was there in that situation, that was experiencing, he was you. Not only was there, he was you taking that hit too. Because when he died on the cross, he took all the pain. Mm-hmm. You don't have to carry that shame. You don't nope. have to carry that guilt. You don't have to carry any. It doesn't define you. No. Nope. It's not your identity. No. Nope. And if you walk around believing that your transgressions and anything that you've gone through is such a huge part of yourself, mm-hmm. you will act like it. Yeah, you make the devil win yep. twice. Yep. Like, I'm just not no nigga. You're not about to win twice. Not, you you won with that person allowing you them uh, allowing themselves to be used by you. But I'm not gonna allow myself to be used by, by you too. Like, come on, like no. How, how somebody much, gotta say no. How much grief I'm gonna give myself? That's okay. kind of crazy. Yeah. You know, like somebody gotta. And that's how I see it. Down. I'm not gonna let you. And I'm, I remember I see stories like, oh, I mean, I killed herself because of whatever. I'm like, ten. You made him win twice. Sis. I did struggle with suicide. I know what that's like. Yeah. You have to. That's hopelessness. Yeah. Like like I talked about, about that week. last week. Hope. Yeah. That's the ease. What? You'll be, you'll feel like life is so bad. 
you'll feel like life is so bad and I just had to keep telling myself like there's light at the end of this tunnel and when the war is that great the purpose is a lot greater mm -hmm. so if you know that you waging a beast he definitely take you out yeah cause of what you intended to do you know what I'm saying like imagine I took a different approach <clears throat> my approach was very I feel like that's just my approach to a lot of things which is really wild my approach was very I look nigga that happened, and what mm -hmm. can you do? Yeah. There's nothing you could do, but what can you do with what you have now? Yeah. You can't change the past. Now, how can, and I looked at the, the positive mm -hmm. in it, which is weird. Because of it, I was able to, heartbreak really, dating, never really experienced it. Mm -hmm. Because I was able to realize, oh, that's BS. He's trash. He's a joke. Like, you know, a lot of times women, and then my mother showed me this. I'm like, we were so fast. I said, Mom, why do girls get with these dudes and they don't see that, oh, he is a joke. How don't you say? It's the absent father piece. Mm. That's the but absent father But she was like, piece. she was like, but thank God that you have discernment to be able to pick them up. But I feel like that discernment also came, I don't know. It's almost like, and this is just my personal mm. feeling, mm. thought and experience. It's almost like God said, I know this happened to you, but I'm going to bless you with this. Mm -hmm. Like every bad, I'm going to take there's that. There's a return. There's a return. They, there's a good I'm going to. And I feel like that was a good that I got. Mm -hmm. So heartbreak and relationships, I never really experienced. Mm -hmm. Because I was able to, it was a, it became this. So it was just like, I was able to be like, all right, look, this happened, can't change it. Now what can we do? I still love God. Let's move on. It was very, yeah. let's move on with life. Mm -hmm. And I was very, it wasn't like, let's move on, forget, like, it never happened. I was mm -hmm. very sub-observant. Okay, you're very angry. Why is that? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, okay, this is the root of your yeah, anger. Yeah. How do we fix that? Yeah. Okay. You don't like this. Why is that? You know, yeah. so, mine was a very different approach. Yeah. You know, and did I, I always kind of wished, like, a lot of women could be like me. Yeah. And to kind of just be like, take your power back and that spent. Yeah. Call it space, babe. Take your power back from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, so it happened. Okay, moving on. I'm still going to live my life. I'm still going to be great. I'm still going to go do what God called me to do. You are going, not going to hold this over my head. I remember I was like seven years old. And I was talking to my mom. And I was like, why doesn't my father want me? Mm. I think what happens in the eyes of little girls, dad is your superhero. Yeah. You know, so even if you have father is like super like a workaholic and super busy you still see glory in that sacrifice mm -hmm. completely absent you spend a lot of your life trying to prove your worth to people mm. that's a that's a that's a scary place to be in yeah. because you'll do anything for it mm. yeah and it's kind of like i would go there with guys that i knew were not good for me because i would see adoration in their eyes mm. like I was like okay in this moment I'm feeling adorned even if it's just because I'm giving them intimacy mm. you know what mm. I'm saying like I still wanted to feel that want the, yeah like it's just like some somebody wanted me in that way like the male you know what I'm saying that was different and you gotta make you have to make an uh, understanding that God is a present father like an ever lasting father mm. they say that for a, a reason. reason yeah because it's like everything that you thought a man was supposed to entail god revamps that completely yeah but i wasn't there yet mm. so i spent so much time romantically all of those things like trying to find my value and i think i even like when i when i was sharing with you like after i would still feel robbed mm -hmm. like no i tell you i would go in the in bathroom and like cry and mm -hmm. stuff because i still felt robbed because there was part of me that was still dealing with that grief because it's fake love yeah and i knew it was you yeah. know it's kind of just like my body was just like that's a lie mm. this person does not love you you mm. know like and i could feel the grief mm. like i can't explain i can't explain that but anybody that's ever been like a victim of like sexual assault or had like really bad relationships with their dad like you probably will understand what i'm saying it's like this grief like this grieving process that you feel mm. after you are intimate even when you consent well obviously hopefully you're always consenting but like mm. even when you're like, consenting it's like this weird grief of like dang i feel like a piece of me is gone Just, yeah because it's, it's like a, such a, a piece of me is sex, gone sex and sexual acts is such a soul connected so activity powerful. you cannot and so to go out there and just 
do it with whoever, <laughs> whenever, <laughs> wherever. Oh, yeah. You don't like the. That's why I'm saying use it so much to get people because mm. it's a robbery of your soul. It is. So to give it away willingly mm. every time yeah. to people you're not even married to. They don't love you. They don't, they don't love you. They don't it's like just you for real. They don't it's just know like, you. They haven't. Why are we doing this? But scripture says show you, study, study to show yourself so approved. Approved. So yeah. as a woman, that person has to make you their personal study. They have to then honor you with saying, okay, this woman was my is my rib, and I'm calling her that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that is, marriage is not a gatekeeping activity. No. It has nothing to do with trying to like control or whatever. It's more about like really understanding how much of a privilege and an honor it is to be intimate with yeah. someone. And the Bible tells you, God said, bless your marriage it's bed. To, yeah, it's supposed to be a beautiful, it's not it, taboo. It's not taboo. But the Bible it's not talks supposed about it. to be perverted. No. It's not supposed to be out of that context because there's so much you are unlocking there. Just to mention, you know, a lot of times people think when God have, let's call it rules, or God tells you to do these things, a lot of people don't follow him. They're like, oh, God just don't want you to live your life and have, mm-hmm. enjoy your life. He just won't. It's micromanage you and tell you what no it is to help you hence why as so many broken homes come from disobedience if people were actually getting married and being faithful in their marriage treating their wife the way god treats your church mm-hmm. and following christ the way they're supposed to because just because you're married doesn't mean that your home you can still be have a broken home even in marriage okay. right so if people are doing what they're supposed to do according to god's word yeah. There will not be so many broken people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the root of There will not be so many statistics statistics, and so many assaults happening mm-hmm. even w- within the marriage home because if God is telling you, oh, don't watch pornography or don't do this, don't do that, now you're not looking at your daughter or your son a weird way because right. you didn't introduce that crap in your... You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You didn't, you didn't let that enter your eye gate. So, yeah. so many things, when these things that God tells you to do, it is not to restrict you from living life but it's to protect you like what the bible said what paul said um everything is um, permissible, permissible but not all is everything's permissible but not everything's beneficial this is this is true eat in any and everything you can go eat mcdonald's nobody's stopping you how's it gonna benefit you no yeah all your digestive system right you know what i'm saying so everything is permissible i'm constipated it's not beneficial. You know, so it's like, even remember I was telling you, like, uh, in Leviticus, the Levitical law, it's a thousand and one things we're not supposed to be eating and wearing, whatever the case may be. <laughs> but I remember, I said, I said, God, I mean, you're that's ODing. A, that's a long list. God, you are ODing. How is this even? Mm-hmm. But when I actually did my research, like, God tells us not to eat um, fish without scales, like catfish, I know, sorry, shrimp, crabs, and all that oh, stuff. She told me I was so yeah, sad. Yeah, I cried. yeah. I cried. I was just like, God, I love me to the crowd. Stop playing oh, with me. Oh, man. You said everything that's... you made was good. What's the problem? No, everything. Listen, okay. Not so, all good for you to eat. Back to that verse. Everything's permissive, not beneficial. Mm-hmm. But when you actually read these things, fish that don't have scales, because they don't have scales, they're not able to get rid of any poisonous toxins, toxins, yeah. toxins and poison. So when you eat it, you, can, you consume all of that, too. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, God, you're not trying to just make us. You're trying to protect me. You're trying to protect me. My bad. You're trying to protect me. My That's bad, true. God. Not mixing a wool with linen. God, what's the big deal? When you look it up, linen actually have benefit benefits for your body. Mm. When you mix it with wool, it cancels out the benefits. Mm. You know? So it's just like following Jesus, following God, doing what he asked you to it do. tells you how to manage your marriage, your personal relationships, your, your friendships, finances. Your, fi- your finances. Finances. The, the finances. Down to your finances. The Bible is such a covering all, seeing okay. all I'm knowledgeable it's, 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 it's that book. It's that it's book so that tells you how to live this life. There. It's a lot of wisdom, a lot mm-hmm. of knowledge, a lot of understanding, guidance. Yeah. As like, depending on what gender you are, of how you need to operate and see yourself in the world. Yeah. How you show up for your kids, how you show up for your mm-hmm. parents. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, it's so much there. And so that's why I think like I can like really walk in my journey completely proud of where I've come from because so many of the things that I was introduced to in a tainted perspective, giving my life back to Christ and really renewing a lot of that, mm-hmm. I see the way it was intended to be. To be yeah. And it's so relieving, y'all. Because yeah. living in your own little personal hell is exhausting. It's tiring. Like, yeah, what? 
you when i say no sleep there is no sleep. listen you cannot sleep without peace you cannot rest what about what about there's no sleep for the wicked Okay. Okay. All right. And I like my sleep. And you and you may not be wicked, but whatever you entertaining is uh, wicked. If you're, you know, engaging, you will lose your rest. You will lose your peace. You will lose your sanity. Like, you, you, like that's something I need y'all to really get. And so that was what it was for me. Like that coming to God, coming to Christ, back on my knees, fell flat on my ass. Okay. On oh, donkey. On oh, my donkey. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's what. That's what has his donkey oh <laughs> i was like what what made her say donkey yeah okay but yeah that's what i'm telling y'all it's true like that fall into that moment yeah it's that, real. but coming out on the other side completely and god is always is. there with open arms yeah cheering you on man. ready to come back home that's like cool. what's it he he leaves the 100 to go get the what's it leave the thousand to get the the ten to ten, the, is it ten? What's it ten? I forget the number, but he live he leave a bunch to go get that one. Yeah, cause remember we were talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm. He was just like, "Are you gonna flood the whole world? Like, are you gonna flood this whole place?" He was like, "If I can find one person with righteous, faith, just one righteous, I, 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 won't, I won't flood, flood it. it. Ain't find, it flooded. He didn't, it, find, so. he didn't find one, y'all. They flood that whole joint. <laughs> he said, none of y'all. None of y'all. That's none so of y'all. sad.'" But yeah, he would so, he, he 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 will acknowledge your heart being take you back. He like will. that lost child, he would take you back, clothe you with new clothing, give you hope again, work with you. Mm-hmm. You are never you you are never too far oh, for God. Thank you, God. One more thing, the expectation that you have for your parents, free yourself from that, because the heartbreak is in the fantasy parent that you thought you mm. were supposed to get. I'm supposed to have that superhero, yeah, you know, whatever, mad, whatever. That's let mad. your heart break. Just let it break. That's not the parent you got. And just accept it for what and it you is. you got to accept it for what it is. Jesus said, when they were inter- when they were interrupting him, and he was praying in the temple, they was like, your mother and your brother is looking for you. And he was like, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Right. My brother my, is those who do the will of my father. Do the will of my father. Meaning, family, blood, means absolutely nothing it's just your canal you came through <laughs> it's just that's just the vessel that's the vehicle that's it. but it does not mean anything god will send you the family that you deserve yeah if you were born into a, a poop show he's gonna send you who you need to get you to that next step and that next level in your life so don't put a false expectation on human beings. When I read that scripture, I was able to see my parents as people. Right. When you stop, when you, if you don't see your parents as people, your heart be broken forever. forever. You'll be walking around, oh, my mother was supposed to do this, my dad was supposed to do They were human beings that were given specific tools and they did the best they could with the tools that they had. And one day, if you are ever blessed to have children of your own and you sit there and crucify your parents all day, your kids is going to be pointing at you too. So you got to be able to give grace. Okay. You have to be able to give grace and just kind of just see it. You know, they was people and they did the best they could with what they had. What I know is that I want to make sure that I live a God-fulfilled life so that there's certain things I can avoid. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want the same lessons. All them curses keep going and going and going and going. Generational. It got to stop. It got to stop there. But that's the one scripture that it came to me just then. Thank you to say to y'all. Because that false expectation is what causes you to walk around with that anger. Yeah. Because you're walking around feeling like the world Imagine owes being you something. Imagine being disappointed over and over again. Yeah, the world owes you something. You being disappointed. Let that, that false, that's not the parent you got. So with the parent you got, you make the time you have or don't. Because if they're not doing the work of your father, then family blood don't mean nothing. You honor those that honor the will of God. That's it. I'm around those people, and if, you know, I have an amazing relationship with certain people, it's because they honor God. It's not because I feel indebted to them because of a, no. a blood relation. Yeah. That has nothing to do with it. Take that expectation off of human beings. They are human. Yeah. Mom and dad, but they are humans. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So once I was able to do that and kind of see my father as a human... And get to know him, mm-hmm. cause that was the thing. I didn't know his story. Yeah. So my empathy, I was True. able to exercise it. Like I was like, wow, he, he well, did something. Yeah, I couldn't expect much from yeah, what you had. Yeah, I couldn't. That you did what you could do. That was all you had. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Sometimes the parent that stayed away, that was God's protection. Okay. There's some things you would have learned had they been around. Mm. Something. It would have been a bigger beast for him to fight. Hmm. 
So there's a reason why sometimes parents are absent, mm-hmm. and you gotta be alright with that. Cause God is everlasting, everlasting yeah. Father too. Yeah. And I think after that, I ain't got nothing else to say. <laughs> that was a great close, and that's that's it. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this. If it's another two hours, my bad. Um, it's two it o'clock. Is, <laughs> Sorry. Well, I hope you guys enjoy. Have a blessed <laughs> week. Comment, subscribe, like, like, all of the good things. All right. <laughs> Bye.